we just drove to Fukatani. This is a really pretty beachy town. And this is the lookout, check it out. It's like the ocean and rolling hills. So there's also a volcano here and it's like on an island that you can get to. The English name is White Island, but it also has a Maori name. But yeah, you can actually see it a little bit today from the lookout where we're at. day just kind of chilling going on the beach just hanging out catching up because we haven't seen each other in a while so that's been really chill days very easy going which is like exactly the vibe that I'm looking for while I'm here and this is like one of the best beaches apparently in New Zealand so yeah really nice to be here be really easy for me to just skip over the tough moments of traveling and living abroad but I want to be real with you guys I want to show you all the sides the good the bad the not so perfect moments because they're all a part of the journey that's what this is basically I'm just sharing with you that today has been really tough I woke up with vertigo and if you've never had vertigo it's awful you basically are nauseous dizzy and you feel like the room is spinning so you just feel really Really bad so I was getting that for some reason I have no idea what the cause is I'm just trying to treat it now but I actually did get sick earlier which I never get sick enough to vomit so that's kind of alarming for me and yeah there's other symptoms I'm having that are not very good so I'm just trying to treat it myself for now these things happen some days will be really great days some days will be low days just trying to deal with this illness and it's hard not having family with you to help you and hopefully Hopefully my next update I will be better and hopefully this vertigo will go away. I have no idea what caused it. So. Hey everyone, so some tragic news has hit the area yesterday. White Island has erupted. This is one of New Zealand's active volcanoes that has erupted. There were tourist groups from a cruise ship on the island when it erupted, which is incredibly sad because that means that there are definitely some traumatizing situations that had occurred, including deaths, injuries, critical conditions just horrific scenes I can only imagine the trauma that will continue after this when the memories are still fresh so it's just super super sad the crazy thing is as you have watched the vlog I just was in Fukatani two days ago on Saturday with Matt when we went and drove out for the day and we saw White Island I pointed it out to you guys and it's really sad that I have to come on here and say that this tragedy has occurred it's just really shook the area a lot of people from back home have been asking if I'm okay because it is so close it's only an hour's drive away I didn't go to the island myself, but I saw it and was thinking maybe that would be something I would be interested in doing and then Yesterday it erupts. Today the story is unfolding and since a lot of the people that were injured and displaced or killed were from the cruise ship that had pulled into Tauranga for part of the cruise, the cruise ship had been grounded overnight but now it is leaving. What the town is asking locals to do is to go out to the mount to wave the cruise ship off as it sails off and continues on its journey just to show solidarity and to express that everybody has their thoughts on those that were affected and I really want to go and express my my thoughts and my support to those that are affected because this is just insane that something like that could happen a natural disaster of that magnitude so just getting over the fact that a volcano erupted is one thing but then wrapping my head around how close it was to me and how much damage and trauma it caused a lot of people so I'm gonna pay my respects today I was also supposed to be going to a meetup to meet locals at a restaurant in the mount so I may do that after also I woke up today with vertigo and felt really ill most of the day but I'm motivating myself to get out there put myself out there I am feeling a little bit better otherwise I probably would have just stayed home but because I'm feeling a little better I'm going to push myself out of my comfort zone head out there and get involved so this definitely is something I had to share on the vlog for sure once a day get to the beach only a four minute walk from my place to the beach. Hey, 
Okay, one of the things I really like about living in this place here in Mount Maganui is she has a lemon tree right outside. And look at these massive lemons. I just literally picked this right off the tree. Let me show you the tree. So I literally just go to the tree and pick a lemon. I love these hibiscus. So pretty. In this house, I don't know if it's all of New Zealand, but in this house, there's a lot of whitetails. I killed a whitetail spider in the bathroom yesterday that was a little bit bigger. So we have another whitetail spider. So now I'm about to battle this thing. But there it is. And I just killed another one here in the living room that was a bit smaller, but it was definitely a white tail. So. Another one. I'm not even scared when I see them anymore because they're so frequent. Yeah, there it is. Another white tail spider. And that's just one day since I saw the last one. But I just wanted to share my spider killing routine because this is what I do when I see a white tail. I basically grab these three things and it works every time. I zap it with my spray on sunscreen because it has a little bit more of a projection out and that kind of stuns them. If I find that that didn't get them enough then I'll go to my insect repellent and then I just come and hit it with a fly swatter basically a good old fly swatter. This is the first test drive. It's taken a while many weeks of looking on Facebook marketplace and trade me app to see a car that I'm interested enough to actually go view it. I'm a little nervous I'm like anxious because I really want a car but I also don't want to rush it because if it's not the one I don't want to pay for it and then have all this stress about things going wrong or whatever so hopefully this is it it's a 2002 Honda Fit that I'm test driving today so hope all goes well wish me luck I'm not gonna vlog while I'm there because that's a bit weird and I don't want to freak out the seller so I'm just gonna do an update after I get back from the test drive and Hopefully it's with some good news. I don't know. If not, the search continues. Not too bad of an outcome, not the ideal outcome, but I'll still keep looking and I'm sure with enough perseverance and tenacity, I'll finally find the car that I will have to call my own and use on my journey here while living in New Zealand. So yeah, I'm just excited and I'm happy that I can document this for my viewers. Hey everyone, I wanted to do an update because yesterday I did my very first test drive. Everything looked great. It was a new Warren of Fitness which is basically in Canada the equivalent of a safety. It was a well-kept vehicle. It wasn't super used and dirty inside and it seemed like the great option except when I actually took it for a test drive and I soon quickly realized that <laughs> the steering was not right. For some reason the car kept pulling to the left. Any vehicle should not pull to one side or the other. It should just go straight. The car was just pulling so incredibly much that I knew that something wasn't right and at first I tried to ignore that feeling and just say I've been looking for so long I just want a car I mean yeah I'll just get it it pulls but I'll just get it who cares he actually went down 2350 originally he asked 2500 because I kept bringing it up during the drive that I was concerned about how much it was pulling and he basically played dumb and was like I don't know what's wrong with it I was just feeling hyper and I was alone so there was nobody there to kind of counsel me and say maybe you shouldn't get this one so I just played into the moment and I told the seller that I was gonna get it and then I was gonna go to the bank and get money out and pay him him. So I left it at that and then as soon as I got into my flatmate's car She let me borrow the car to do the test drive. I started calling my support group So I called my dad. I called mom I called my flatmate even who recommended me talk to her stepdad who is a mechanic I called him and everybody advised me that I should not be purchasing a vehicle that is pulling to one side or the other And so I basically calmed down. I had my support group ground me I came to my senses by talking to my support group So the number one thing that I would recommend when buying a car if possible have a friend with you there to ground you keep you in the reality of the situation because sometimes when you're the one buying you get wrapped up in the excitement of it you think that it's great but then you'll have a second opinion with you to kind of guide you through the process and let you know yeah no this doesn't look like a good deal after all unfortunately I don't have that so my method that I've been using without someone physically here is just to call my support group from back home I did not get the car but I actually think it was a good thing because odds are something would have happened and I would have had to put way more money into that vehicle than the actual worth of the vehicle so that's not worth it and not what I'm looking for. There is a car out there for me. I'm just gonna keep doing some research. I do a daily car search and hopefully I'll find another one to test drive soon. I 
to my flatmate's family's Christmas in Fukatani. So they're doing an adult secret Santa. I decided to participate, so it was like a $30 gift. So I just picked up some stuff for the gift. And I also got the little girl that lives here. I got her an Uno card set. We've been playing a bit of cards. She's been teaching, teaching me some games. And I decided to get her a card game that I played as a kid, Uno. I'm actually re-gifting a gift that I received in a secret Santa at work. This print, which is just a beautiful print of a local indigenous artist in Ottawa. I kept it, brought it with me, and thought that this may come in handy as a gift to somebody. So I'm actually gonna just pop it in here and frame it in this frame. I'm gonna pop it into this bag. And then also, I'm just gonna throw in this little cute mug tea set. English breakfast tea, sugar biscuits, and then a mug. I thought that was cute. So this is my little secret Santa gift. And then also, I didn't think I vlogged this, but my Fitbit is broken. The screen actually will not turn on anymore. So I actually contacted Fitbit and they replaced my screen. So they just sent this, I got it in the mail. Yeah, the customer service for Fitbit was amazing. I just told them, hey, I use my Fitbit every day. This is really sad. I'm living in New Zealand now and my Fitbit just broke one morning. It's not my fault. It was a manufacturer's defect. Even though I was out of warranty, they still sent me a replacement. So I'm really happy about that. They didn't make me send in my busted one. So I was able to use it until my replacement got here. So yeah, I have my little screen replacement. So I'm gonna sync it and pair it to my phone and now I'm gonna have a new Fitbit again. That's amazing customer service. Just having a nice day shopping around, trying to get into the Christmas spirit, even though here in New Zealand it is so beachy and sunny that I really don't feel Christmassy because it's not snowy, but I'm starting to slowly get into the groove here, so yeah. Don't mind these plastic things. They're to protect the frame. There it is. It fit really nice. So the border was actually 8x10. I got that spot on, but I just left it in there and then just put the glass on top of it. It's a really nice simple print. I really love it. So I think that someone who gets this will be happy. I thought I would do an update because a little bit has happened in terms of the finding a car, the car search. I was on my way home from Bayfair and I spotted a car for sale just on the side of the street. It was a 1997 Toyota Corolla, looked pretty good condition. The guy wanted 1500 for it, so I took it for a test drive. I did an inspection on my own. I learned a lot on how to inspect a car from Chris Fix on YouTube, which was awesome because I knew nothing about cars, so it was really nice to be able to have a little bit of knowledge to take in with me while I was doing a pre-inspection myself. And yeah, so I took it for a test drive. It seemed okay, but I noticed that the front two tires would definitely need to be replaced because I was taught basically what to look for to see if the tread was really low, and it was. So I've said, you know, I'm gonna have to do tire work. Would you drop it from 15? And the guy said, yeah, I'll drop it to 1200, which was pretty good. But this is not a mint condition car. It's old, it's from 97. It was a miracle that it was an automatic to begin with. It had no air conditioning, and it definitely did not even have a radio. Somebody had ripped the whole radio out of the car. It's not like it was just broken. There was literally nothing there. So very bare bones car. Probably not even worth 1200 bucks. I decided to do some negotiating. I said, listen, I have a thousand cash on me. It's going to need some work. Will you accept that? And I pulled out my envelope of cash and he said no. So you know what? I just said, yeah, okay, well, thanks for, you know, the time for me looking at the car, but I'm, I'm pretty firm on my thousand cash. He was pretty firm on his no. He wanted 1200. So yeah, I just ended up walking away. Way. but what I learned from that is don't be afraid to negotiate on the car especially if you know that it's probably not worth the amount that it's being sold for don't be afraid to barter if it doesn't work out no big deal. I'm not in a rush to buy a car. I'm not going to just feel pressure to buy a vehicle. So that's about it. I just wanted to do a little update on the car search. Today I actually woke up with a sore throat. So I am medicated right now trying to help with that symptoms and everything. Luckily it seems to just be localized to my throat. So I'm hoping I can just treat it with some medicine and then be good. But we're actually leaving today. We're leaving the Mount to Fukatani and we're going to my flatmate's family's place for Christmas because it's Christmas Eve today. It's such a beautiful sunny day. It does not feel like Christmas to me as a Canadian. It should usually just be a bunch of snow on the ground and really cold. Yeah, we're gonna head out and do a little road trip and come back after before New Year's Eve.
Zealand fish and chips. Yeah. <laughs> this is right. some fish. Wrapped all old school. I mean, look, there's a, you can even wrap it in there. Freya wondering if there's some for her. Mm. Yeah, we usually like have it at the beach or something, so you eat it like this. But Mum so I'm still in Fakatane and I'm just out for a walk in the evening. It's a lovely evening. There's this nice pond. Everything looks quite beautiful. I'm sick right now, if you can't tell by my voice. I'm trying to recover from being ill. I got a bit of a sore throat congestion up here, so just trying to rest a little bit. Hopefully today was the worst of it and I'll get better from now. I've been having such a lovely, lovely time here with Kitty and Terry, my flatmates, mom and stepdad, and they've been incredible hosts. It's been relaxing. It's been a lot of eating. Like they've just invited me to so many family dinners and I just feel really, really blessed to have had this time with them. And you know, they just let me into their home and they're so friendly and welcoming and I'm just really thankful and grateful for that because it really helped make my Christmas very special and we're just winding down into the new year now so hopefully I feel a bit better and I'll be able to uh, ring in the new year healthier than I am now. Just loving this time to relax and connect with people that are really really kind people. I feel really really lucky.